Hello once again, this is Jason, Mr. The Big Man. Okay, today what we're going to look at is Rex. Um, we're going to make a start. I'm just going to show you around it, and then I'm going to show you how we can create what we have here on two tracks via, via one MIDI file. Um, it's going to be a lot easier. It keeps your track count down. I mean, if you're like me, mine exceeds 20, possibly 30 at a time, depending on the track that I'm working on. Um, so I like to try and mix down or keep my track count low, especially for things like whenever I'm uh, creating pads and creating sounds, because really you don't need to have three or four tracks for those sounds, you could just dump them all into a rack and uh, go on from there then, okay? So first of all, um, I'll show you around the actual rack itself. Um, on the left hand side here you've got your macro controls, now later on uh, on another tutorial I'll show you how to use those, basically they use them to map the different parameters within the rack and then MIDI map them to your rotary dials on your MIDI keyboard. Um, in this part here is where you're going to put your instruments. Each instrument um, will be a separate instrument. Um, and therefore you'll have what's called chains within these. So chain 1 and chain 2 for these two sets of samples especially. Um, you'll be using that. And then on this side is where you put your effects. This is the most important thing, um, because obviously if I want to do this in Sampler, I can just drop both sets of samples in Sampler and map it to the same key. The problem is that for each individual sample, I can't actually affect them in any way. And that's really what I want to achieve um, with the rack itself. So I'll get set up with two Sampler instruments and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you can see, I've set up two separate chains. Um, each one has a sampler instrument on it. I'm just going to drop each sample into those and then show you these parts along the top here because this is what we're going to use to map the samples themselves so that when we press a key, both sample files trigger and uh, we can sort of work on uh, putting some effects onto some of these things and try and give us a wee bit better of a, a more of an atmosphere then in that case, depending on the key that we're pressing from here. So I'll just load the samples into Sampler now so that um, you can see exactly how it works. Okay, so basically I've drew, loaded both samples in and they're now loaded against the keyboard itself. So as you can hear, um, one thing I've just realized as well is that I'm using Simpler in this one because I've chosen the wrong instrument, but it doesn't really matter because Simpler just works as well as Sampler. And for all of those people that have Simpler at home but not Sampler, um, I'll show you how to build a rack. Because obviously you can only put in one sample itself into, into Simpler and, and sort of hope for the best. But I'll show you how to build a rack where we can put in as many samples as you possibly like then in a later tutorial. So now I've got them all into their separate sort of um, folders. What you would tend to do at this stage is to rename each chain so that you know which uh, one is which. Um, if we click on the key parameter, it'll show us the uh, key mappings for each chain. And as you can see, they're mapped right across the keyboard because we only have one sample. You can change this, obviously, depending on what you want to use it for, so you have it against one key only. Um, well, what I want to do now is show you how to affect each one separately, because you can add your own effects into this within Sampler itself. I'll give you a better idea of how it works, you know. Okay, so I've set up a simpler delay, so have a wee listen to see what it sounds like. And as you can hear, it's delaying just the second sample then from there. 
And so that's given us a better idea of how to work with things. That's really the, the main use that I use it specifically for sound design in that way. Um, but in other Rack tutorials that I'll put up over the next uh, couple of weeks or so, I'll show you how to actually use it so that it can be used against anything else and then save out your rack then from there. Okay, thanks very much.